with that out of the way, let's continue on with this new news about the WNBA expanding. So let's see, where to start? Um, the WNBA playoffs, you know, they're starting, they're right around the corner. I believe it's going to start this weekend for any of you guys interested. And now I'm not sure exactly how I feel about the WNBA playoffs starting over the weekend, you know. I feel like it would have been better if the WNBA playoffs actually, you know, happen and the games happen during the week, like, for example, on Tuesdays and on Wednesdays and rather early on Friday before college football starts and maybe even on Thursday before the NFL starts because I have a feeling that over the weekend, the NFL is going to eat up a lot of that viewership for the WNBA playoffs. And that's going to be a big problem for the WNBA because they are, they're they on very good track to making a profit for this year. First time that's probably ever going to happen. But they really, like this, the best part of their game, the postseason, like the best part of any sports uh, season is the postseason. And if you are having those games in the middle of the NFL, then you're just, you can't compete against that market in the United States. This was a problem when the NBA, you know, did the bubble. Like, during the finals, the NBA finals, people were watching the return of the NFL more than they were watching the NBA finals. It was the least viewed finals in the history of the NBA for a reason, because the NFL was going on at exactly the same time. They were the NBA was pulling 6 million viewers. Meanwhile, the NFL, the opening night game of the NFL, was pulling in 22 million viewers. You cannot compete with the NFL. So I personally think that the, the playoffs, they should happen like you know in the, during the week when NFL games and college football games aren't going on. That is just me, however. So, but aside from that, the WNBA is going to consider expanding back to Portland. Now, I say back... Because the WNBA used to have a team in Portland before, all the way back in 2000. However, it ended up folding after the 2022 season, so it only lasted two years. Go figure. I mean, try expanding the WNBA in, um, in general at the time in 2000, when barely anybody was watching WNBA basketball. It's really a difficult task. Not to mention the fact that Portland as a, as a whole... And, you know, the Portland fans, there aren't really that many. Like, I'm sorry to say, but Portland rarely gets any sort of media attention coming in from, like, not only, like, the Blazers from the NBA, but, like, in any sport in general. Like, the Portland Trailblazers barely get talked about. They didn't, they never got talked about last season, especially when, since Damian Lillard has left, the Portland Trailblazers haven't had any kind of traction in terms of viewership and, like, actual media attention and I mean if Portland the NBA team if the Trailblazers aren't getting much media attention imagine how much media attention the WNBA was going to get especially at that time like pre Caitlin Clark the WNBA was nowhere near and it never made a profit never was competing for any kind of money never it was never popular never popular and, but now that it's becoming popular, now they can actually legitimately have an expanded franchise all the way over in Portland. Now, this is going to be the 15th franchise for the WNBA, and it is going to begin play in the 2026 NBA, uh, WNBA season. Excuse me. So the new team is going to be owned and operated by RAJ Sports, led by controlling owner Lisa Bethal Mirage and her brother Alex Bethal. And they also are the majority owners of the NWSL's Portland Thorns. So <clears throat> that's where the ownership is going to go to in this WNBA franchise. This is the first time the WNBA is going to return to a city that it previously left, although Engelbert expressed an openness to do so again in the future. So this is a quote coming in from Engelbert and what she told ESPN. I don't think we ever have a bias as to whether there was a team there before or not. But certainly I think Portland has proven they'll show up for women's sports and definitely for women's basketball. So we're excited to be coming back to the market. Engelbert's letter in November was addressed to Oregon Senator Ron Wyden 
a champion of women's sports who had been working closely with the bid and hosted the commissioners at the nation's first sports bar dedicated solely to women's sports, the sports bra, during a site visit to Portland last year. And the article continues going on uh, with some quotes coming in from the Golden State Valkyries as, quote, 72 hours of really bitter disappointment, at least this is what it's saying, quote, after 72 hours, we said, back on our feet, we're going to get this done, Wyden told ESPN. Another quote, it really was a constant building and a process from then. I am particularly appreciative of Kathy because she's got me calling her saying, what's next? We sh what should we do? What's the path? We don't want to give up. And Really, I think, you know, the, one of the big problems with expansion teams is just being able to acquire women to actually play for the team. And that's going to be a big question that's going to be brought up. Exactly where are they going to be placed in the draft? And they're, they're set to make the franchise, you know, in 2026. That's when they're going to be playing. And personally, I think this is going to be like the biggest hunch ever, but Juju from USC that female co collegiate player that's just absolutely phenomenal that people are saying could be better than Caitlin, I think she's going to get drafted to Portland. I can totally see her as the new face of the, um, the Portland franchise and bringing the attention over to Portland and getting the franchise off on the right foot. Like, if there's anybody that is should be on that Portland team, it should be Juju in the future. And it is lined up perfectly because the franchise is going to be coming in 2026. So in two years from now, Juju still has way more years under her collegiate belt. And she was only a freshman last season. So she's going to be a sophomore this coming season. Then she'll be a junior. And by the time she's a junior, she'll either be in her senior year playing in her senior year or she'll get drafted by, the, by Portland. I'm praying and I'm hoping that Juju gets drafted to Portland because that would be amazing for the franchise that's literally just on the come up. Everybody's going to want to watch Juju. Like, she could be the next face. Like, she could be the next great Caitlin Clark. She could be it. And I, I, have, I have huge faith in Juju. So I really, really hope that if there's anybody that's going to be on that team, it is her. And that, the Port and that Portland immediately drafts her and immediately picks her up before some other team does. And, like, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you would rather see somebody else from uh, college bas women's college basketball join Portland and their new franchise because I think like I think she will be phenomenal like it would be it would be her squad she will be the the face of the team she already has one of the best handles that I've seen coming in from a female athlete in college like right next to Caitlin Clark again like their handle of the ball what they are able to do with the ball is amazing like they've really come a long way with the WNBA and I really really pray and I hope that Juju ends up being the face of Portland that would be so that would be so awesome like it would literally be like the female version of Damian Lillard it could be the female version of Damian Lillard over there in Portland and that would be a sight to see let me know in the comments what you guys think of that but we're out of time for the second segment, so now we're going to shift our focus back over to the NBA because CBS just recently released a list of their top 10 players in the NBA right now, and I'm going to list off all of those players. I'll give my opinions on whether or not I feel like they should be moved, whether or not they deserve to be on here, all of that good stuff in the third segment, so stay tuned for that if you guys are interested. I will be right back. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? GSMC Sports Network is available on YouTube. Just search GSMC Sports Network. Get your fix of daily sports talk shows on YouTube absolutely free. NFL, college football, NBA, MLB, MMA, UFC, fantasy football, and so much more. GSMC Sports Network has shows running all day long with new sports shows starting every two hours. Just like on your favorite cable sports channel, except GSMC Sports Network is absolutely free. Just search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube to catch one of your new favorite shows, like the GSMC College Football Podcast, Chip Shot Football Podcast, Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast, GSMC Basketball Podcast, and so many more. Check it out for yourself. GSMC Sports Network, now available on YouTube absolutely free. Search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube right now. 